And the game is underway. Jones lets it bounce, picks it up on the hop at the five. Julius Jones looks for a block, takes it down the sideline to about the 25-yard line, where he's stopped by Tyrone Gilliard on the Pitt special teams, a 19-yard return. Let's check the starting lineups now, courtesy of Adidas. Black, Mahan, Fane, Milligan, and Volders up front for the Irish. Carlisle Holiday gets his second career start. Julius Jones at tailback. Lipinski, Givens, Hunter, and Owens round out the starting offensive lineup for Notre Dame. And uh, as we say that Julius Jones is start, the Irish come out with four wide receivers. And Carlisle Holiday has... A spread formation to open the game as he hands to the tailback Fisher, who started back there at tailback, and he has stopped by Pitt's Brian Knight, one of their best players at a defensive end spot, a senior from Buffalo. There's Knight along with Murray, Stevens, and Smith up front for the Panthers. Pirafoy, Hayes, and Williams, the linebackers. Uh, Hayes and Pirafoy, a couple of top tacklers on the team. And Ferguson, Walker, Ponko, and Cox in the secondary. Ramon Walker is the leading tackler for the Panthers on the season. Four-yard gain on first down. Here's the second down play option. Holiday keeps and is close enough and does have a first down across the Irish 35-yard line where he's tackled by Brian Benneke, the junior from Youngstown, Ohio. Well, Tom, Bob Davey uh, said to Jim Gray before the game, you know, we don't really have an offensive identity. You know, good teams do something at least well. Nebraska has power football. Florida throws it. Virginia Tech, Virginia Tech has great special teams. But Notre Dame has to find something that they can fall back on when things aren't going well. I think it's going to be the option play with the quarterback holiday. And they're resetting the play clock. That's the reason uh, the Irish have been called back into the huddle. Opening possessions have been a disaster for the Irish. Yeah, they're not playing well, yeah, offensively or defensively. You know, they, 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 on both sides of the ball, the opening possessions have been poor. High formation here. Lipinski, the fullback. Fisher, the tailback. Hunter and Campbell, the wide receivers. This is Fisher. And he gets two or three yards on first down, tackled again by Brian Knight. And yeah, finished off by Ramon Walker, the free safety, number 25 for Pittsburgh. Knight's an interesting guy, 57 right there. Just, you know, big personality kind of guy, a big play player. A year ago, he had 11 and a half sacks, been injured most of this year. Hasn't really kind of played up to the level. But when he gets going rushing the passer, he can really bring some heat to the quarterback. Already has his undergraduate degree, a graduate student now in education. Carl Holiday's pass through the hands of David Gibbons and incomplete, covered by Torrey Cox of the Panthers. The passing game has been, how would you say it? Uh, very poor. Uh, yeah, you know, let's, let's be honest. This, this ball just took a little bit too long to get to David Gibbons. Still catchable, but David Gibbons was expecting the ball to have a little bit more juice on it. Now, here's one of the, you know, the first third down of the game, and Notre Dame's going to come and spread it out and try to have Hol give Holiday a lot of run pass options. So this is something we haven't seen much of, spread formation and shotgun. Crawford, Jenkins, Gibbons, and Hunter, four wides. Yep. The right, the right, flag down. right tackle move goalie. Today's officiating crew is headed by Dennis Hennigan, a former Division III player. It's a Big East crew. And Hennigan. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, five yard penalty, remain third down. You know, coaches, I mean, people boo the quarterbacks, but the players sometimes have to take some responsibility. It's one of the off, I think it was the right tackle move early on that play. Players have to take some responsibility. You can't, those, are the, you know, the lost yardage, those hidden yards that you lose on those really silly penalties. Walt Harris, the Pittsburgh coach, hoping to stop the Irish on third and long. It's third and 11. Holiday. Crossing pattern and a nice catch by Omar Jenkins, but short of the first down. Again, how many times have we seen this, Pat, that the receiver not getting deep enough to pick up the first down? Mark Ponko made sure he didn't run after the catch. Yeah, and, and they may, they may endear uh, D. Gopher on this one. This is a blitz adjustment, though. You know, on third and long, you blitz, you hope to force the short throws. It's exactly what happened. You know, a pretty good catch, but, you know, when you have 13 yards to give up, you give them a little bit of cushion on the blitz coverage, and you uh, force uh, a punt, a potential punt. Now, you know, this is an area where you maybe a fake punt it. Antonio Bryant will 
Feel Joy Hillbolds. Conti takes down a high snap and a bad kick. Hillbold leading the nation in putting coming into the game, averaging 48.8 a kick, had a high snap and never found his rhythm on that one. So Pittsburgh starts with good field position after only a 15-yard punt. Petiti, Shaw, Reed, Anderson, and Morgan up front for the Panthers. Starting quarterback will be David Priestley. He's a senior from Los Alamitos, California. Kirkley, Polite, Bryant, English, and Wilson. English the leading receiver because Bryant has been injured most of the season. And Raymond Kirkley, the starting tailback, is only a freshman, true freshman. Looks like Priestley's changing the play here at the line of scrimmage. It's not very subtle about the change. <laughs> <laughs> Still has plenty of time. Ten on the play clock. Play action fake, and Priestley will go to the air down the sideline. Has a man open. A pass and and pass interference. Obviously, English was behind Shane Walton. The ball underthrown, and as English tried to come back to it, the flags fly. R.J. English with 15 or 14 catches tops on the team. I tell you, heads up by David Priestley. Now, Notre Dame likes man for man coverage. They, they play a free safety free, but underneath in the receivers, they're playing man for man. Walton that time against English. Pass interference on the defense. 15 yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. First down. Not necessarily, actually, Tom, a bad penalty in that case, because if he catches it, yeah. he, maybe he scores. You're right. Had the ball been uh, out in front of him, he, English, was behind the defense, and it would have been six. Yeah, but, but watch for that man-for-man -man coverage. If you can protect, if Pitt can protect their quarterback, they're going to have a chance for a lot of big plays in the passing game. Five defensive backs, nickel defense for the Irish on first down from the Notre Dame 45-yard line. Priestley is in the shotgun with four wide receivers. That's Bryant in motion, and Bryant slips. Pass comes to him anyway. Flag is down, and the ball comes free. But the whole play is being stopped now. As Bryant made the catch, Dykes and Walton hit him. But the flag was already down for an illegal procedure against Harris and the Panthers, I believe. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Panthers also. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. Irish defense, Weaver, Campbell, Wisney, and Roberts. Um, the linebackers, Watson and Harrison, are the two top tacklers on the season. And Walton, Dykes, Israel, and Duff. Duff getting a start today, replacing Clifford Jefferson. And Ryan Roberts starting up front for the injured Grant Irons. From the shotgun, first and 15 right at midfield. Scoreless first quarter, 12 minutes, 9 seconds left. English was in motion. Priestley with a handoff to Kirtley. And Courtney Watson, the leading tackler for the Irish, gets number 39 on the season and his eighth tackle for a loss during the campaign. You know, Courtney Watson has played very well for the Irish. He was replacing Anthony Denman from a year ago, was one of their better defensive players, and they weren't sure what kind of linebacker who he would be. He came in as a running back, but this is a guy that has really responded. Uh, he's good, kind of an edge player, a chaser. He's their real linebacker, so he didn't play the tight end much, but he, he's good because he's got very quick feet. Said he kind of misses uh, running with the football. He was a terrific running back. He said, you know, if they need trouble, if they're having trouble scoring touchdowns, I still think I can get it across. Well, they are. <laughs> Priestley stands in the pocket, delivers, it's intercepted. First Irish interception of the season. Abram Elam picked it off, looking for a block. He's taken down by the shoe tops on what might have been a big uh, play by Petiti. Roosevelt Bynes was the intended receiver, and Abram Elam, the sophomore from Riviera Beach, Florida, gets the first interception on the season for the Irish and returns it 23 yards. And not only is it a great defensive play, that lifts the spirits of a struggling offense. And now, Elam, number 16, a nickel back. The ball was thrown a little bit too late. And then Elam just playing center field, it's like catching a punt. And, and now, Holiday has got to turn this into some points. They have not had this kind of field position much this year. Tight eye formation here. Lipinski and Julius Jones. Play action fake. Holiday's going to run. Carlisle Holiday across midfield into Pittsburgh territory. Where he's tackled by Ryan Smith. So 
So the Irish trying to convert the turnover and though the defense uh, generally has played pretty well this season one thing they have not done is create turnovers to give the offense a short field. That's the only uh, the third one of the year. You mentioned first interception two fumbles and uh, you know a year ago that's what they do and the offense played in a lot of short fields. Holiday under center with four wide receivers on second and six. Jones took one tackle but then is taken down by a host of white shirted defenders led by Ramon Walker. You Gerald watch, Hayes also got a piece. When you watch Ramon Walker, number 25 for Pittsburgh. Generally, when he hits you, he's one of the, you know he's a well, heavy hitter types. You go down. I mean, Pittsburgh is one and two, but it's not because of the way Ramon Walker has played. He had 22 tackles yeah. against Miami, the number one team in the nation, and a former Ohio Defensive Player of the Year from Akron. Play like a champion today. That famed motto that the Irish have on the tunnel leading to the stadium that they all touch on the way out. From the shotgun, Holiday is going to run. Looks like the quarterback draw, and he won't get much. Back to the line of scrimmage, maybe. Brian Knight was ready for that one. Well, two third down plays, two blitzes for Pittsburgh. I mean, Paul Rhodes, defensive coordinator, likes to bring guys off the corners. You can see some guys off the edges here. Those are safeties and uh, outside linebackers. Again, they were trying to, you know, get through the first wave and have Holiday pick it up with his feet. But uh, again, good defense by Paul Rhodes' squad. That Pittsburgh defense uh, moves around a lot, blitzes a lot, very unpredictable. Hillbolt's first punt was only 15 yards, and Bryant deep for Pittsburgh. Hillbolt sails this one high. Fair catch called for, and Bryant makes it at about the 15-yard line. 31-yard punt. We're in a scoreless first quarter. Notre Dame and Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh takes over deep in its own territory at the 14-yard line. Priestley still at quarterback. Polite and Kirkley in the eye formation. Now Bryant with a little motion. And a handoff to Kirkley. And the freshman is stopped after a yard by Daryl Campbell in the center of the Notre Dame defense. And Donald Dykes from the safety spot made sure as Big Rob Petiti, all 330 pounds of him, 6'6", a redshirt freshman for Rums in New Jersey, is one of the uh, bright lights on that Pittsburgh offensive line. They expect a lot of him as his career advances, just 19 years old and a redshirt freshman. Yeah, and there's a guy who can't ride coach. I mean, 6'6", 330, and still growing. From the shotgun, Petiti now gets under center. They shift into the eye with Polite and Kirkley. And the handoff is to Kirkley, who tries to cut back and stumbles. And Andy Wisney had a beat on him as well. So two running plays net very little for the Panthers, still deep in their own territory. You know, Petiti just kind of finishing up the story on him. His father worked in one of the World Trade Towers, 31st floor. Have the report got out safely, but uh, it's been a few a few tough weeks for the Petitis and others. His father, Bob, uh, able to uh, get out safely, but an anxious few moments until Rob was able to learn that his dad had indeed gotten out. Here's a third down play. Dying defense, six defensive backs for the Irish. From the shotgun, Priestley sends it down the field for English. Made a one-hand stab at it, but couldn't get it. Covered by Jason Beckstrom of the Irish. The, the Irish defense, and it went three and out. I mean, they have not had many of those this year. I mean, the three and out plays, you, you know, you, they've had a turnover so far, so this game, defensively at least, has started well. Now, English is a big, tall receiver. I think on deep balls, if anything, give him a chance to jump, you know, run, jump up among the defender and, and make the catch. Don't waste the throw by overthrowing. So Andy Lee, the sophomore from Westminster, South Carolina, ready to punt it toward Julius Jones. First punt for the Panthers. Their other drive ended in an interception. High punt. Jones does not call for a fair catch. Takes it at the 42. Tries to get to the sideline. Hemmed in by the Panthers. And the tackle by Mark Ponko after a six-yard return of a four. But the problem remains finding the Notre Dame offense. You know, like uh, Waldo, it has been hard to find. Hey, two possessions today, two punts. But look, 14 drives with three and out. Only two touchdowns. Longest drive this year has been six yards. And only one play longer than 20 yards. That has been the problem. 
they've had no you know explosive plays. The lowest scoring team in all of Division 1A football. Holiday on the option with a pitch to Jones. Pittsburgh defends it well. Ramon Walker once again right in the middle of things for the Panthers. And Notre Dame with two touchdowns this year in almost 13 quarters of play as number one Miami, as you would expect, rolling over Troy State. Not what are they doing yeah. playing Troy State? Would you answer yeah. that for me? I, I don't have no answer for that, but Monte, I said Miami <laughs> against Pittsburgh, and they do have some really, really special athletes. And guys have you know, that swagger to them, that number one swagger. West Virginia, Notre Dame's opponent next week, struggling against Virginia Tech. Holiday sees a seam. Cuts back close to the first down, flag down. Now, uh, excuse me, no flag down as Holiday scrambles for a first down. Brian Benneke finally able to get it. Well, you know, here's you play quarterback for this play, Tom. Nothing downfield. I mean, you see this big running lane, and, and that's what they want to do. If you have any doubts, go ahead and run it because they think he's probably better running than throwing. Right. But sooner or later, they, they are going to need some plays out of the passing game. I mean, it seems like you'd rather pass kidney stones in the ball. From time to time. <laughs> they just can't be one dimensional. No. Right. First down handoff to Julius Jones. Short game. Dan Stevens up front tackle for Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh will rotate 20, what, 24 guys in on defense, uh, six guys in the interior of the line, a bunch of linebackers. Beinecke and Williams kind of share one position, and Pirafoy and Moore on the outside. But Ramon Walker and Gerald Hayes, and Hayes, the middle linebacker, number 51, they're in every play. Two passes, nine rushes for Notre Dame so far, although a couple of passes were called that uh, Holiday scrambled on. Here is a pass, and it's complete to Javon Hunter. His first catch of the day is down to the 25-yard line. And tackled there by Sean Robinson for Hunter. His 19th catch of the season, it went for 12 yards. Good call by Kevin Rogers. And again, the free safety blitz. That time, Ramon Walker was blitzing. You know, forcing Notre Dame to you know, come up with some plays in the passing game, which is obviously smart. But he was able to hit him on the run, actually, a, little, a few yards after the catch. We haven't seen much of that this year from the Irish, but a nice play for Hunter. Spot the ball at the 26. First down for the Irish. Holiday with a handoff to Jones. Julius Jones bounces to the outside and slips at about the 23-yard line. Once again, Raymond Walker was bearing down on him. Yeah, that, that was awkward for uh, Julius Jones. Let's go down to the field. Check in with Jim Gray. Jim? All right. Thank you very much, Tom. As you've seen, only three completions by Notre Dame so far. Three attempts, rather. The wind down here is very, very shifting. It's all over the place. It's into the face right now of the Notre Dame bench. It's going to make the kicking game and the passing game very difficult for both teams. And it's much colder down here on the field than it is up in that cushy place in the booth where you are. You right know? now down here, it's, it's, it's got to be about 30 degrees or less. Jim, 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 how do you know that? Yeah, that you've lived in California too long now. <laughs> You're right about that. The blood thinned out. Fisher stops short of the 15. He'll be close to the first down. Amir Carafoy, outside linebacker with the tackle for Pittsburgh. You know, uh, Tom, we've seen the Irish twice in person this year, and this is a situation we've not seen much of, that, you know, short yardage situation. They, they don't, they haven't had that. They seem like been a lot of third and longs. Actually, they're measuring. Going to call the chains in yep. from the sideline for the measurement. A bad day to be a hummingbird, too, with all that wind. <laughs> it is. Just a chain link short. The ball is about a little short of a first down. So here is a chance for uh, a gambling play, would you think? I, I think the way Notre Dame struggled on offense, I think you pick up the first down. I mean, uh, all the Notre Dame subway alumni would love that fake into the line and the right. Bart Starr pass to the end zone, but I, I think the way you struggle, you get a first down. Seventh play of the drive upcoming. Third down and an inch from the pit 16. Here's that wishbone looking full house back to you. Holiday with a fake, a rollout, and he's going to keep it. Fumble the ball out of bounds. The Irish will retain possession. And who else? Ramon Walker, the man that knocked it loose. I think that's four tackles already for Ramon Walker. And he's had a pretty good blitz as well. Now, they were going for the end zone on third and short. He ended up pick up, you know, it's a smart play because it gives him the chance to, to run for the first down if he can't throw it. But I'll tell you, Ramon Walker is going to go through several quarterbacks this year if he keeps hitting them like that. 
Holiday was able to pick up first down yardage, so the Irish with a first down at the big 14. Just under five minutes left in a scoreless first quarter. Fisher broke free for a moment. He takes it to the seven. Beinecke with the tackle. A good block by Sean Mahan, the left guard, Jordan Black, the left tackle. Good blocks in here. Watch this. Double team here. Godsey, the tight end, kicks his guy out. Again, not seen much of uh, that dominance from the offensive line the first three games, but that's a uh, very good play there by Black, Godsey, and Mahan. Second down and three from the good seven. Notre Dame has not scored in the first quarter all season. Fisher burrows his way inside the five-yard line. Notre Dame also has not been in front at any time this season, so if they can punch this in, it will be a milestone. Stevens and Walker, that last tackle of Tony Fisher. You know, it's been, it's been a good drive, and I think a lot of, you know, their offense today thus far has been set up by good defense. It started with a turnover in the first drive, and then, you know, they got good field position after the uh, three and out, so the defense has done their part. Long drive, it's the 10th play coming up. We're going back to you. Holiday option. Pitching to Jones. Touchdown. from Carlisle Holiday and scores his first touchdown of the season. Nick Seta to attempt the extra point. It's out of three. And the Irish have their first first quarter touchdown of the season. First time they have led their opponent this season. Jones with the score after a 10-play drive. And the Irish lead Pittsburgh 7-0. And they have their first lead in a space of some 17 quarters with a long drive to go up 7-0. And, you know, Tom, they're not uh, good enough yet throwing the football. Where, you know, they have to play close, tight ball games. You know, and if the games have gotten away from them in the first quarter, the first three. Right now, it's going according to plan for the Irish. Nick Seta will kick off with Cox and Spencer deep for Pitt. And Seta's kick into the end zone, and Cox takes a knee there for the touchback. And Pitt will get it at the 20-yard line. Let's go back to the touchdown. Everybody pats the guy who scores in the back, but watch the block here by Tony Fisher and the decision. Now, this is an option play. Smart play by Fisher. That's the option gap. You know, you, you get anxious sometimes, and you block the option gap, but that was not his responsibility. His responsibility was right here. Watch him come inside and clean it up from the inside. So a smart, disciplined play by Tony Fisher leads to the touchdown. They didn't need to block that man no. because they were going to make him commit and then go the other way it's that does take some discipline it does see a man right in your face let's say about the options you don't have to block everybody 10 play drive Pitt now tries to answer starting from its own 20. Priestley's in the shotgun with a handoff to Kirkley and the freshman broke a couple of tackles and uh, Raymond Kirkley down with about a five-yard gain Ryan Roberts Courtney Watson in on the Notre Dame tackle you know Kirkley you mentioned a freshman true freshman and very good runner had a very productive game against Miami almost 100 yards average almost five yards a carry and a surprisingly good receiver 13 catches on the year all these uh, five wide uh, five uh, skill players can catch Kirkley from Madison, Virginia, was Virginia State Player of the Year and ran for 5,300 yards in his high school career. You see why? Breaking tackles to pick up a Panther first down to the 35-yard line. Kirkley rushed for 5,300 yards and 87 touchdowns in his high school career. Well, you know, they had, a few years ago, they had a, a long time ago, I guess a good freshman runner by the no name of Tony Dorsett. I guess it was Dorsett in those days, but Dorsett. <laughs> And if he can be anywhere near that good, they can be very pleased with him. 93 yards against Miami. Here's their opening game. They all struggled against the University of South Florida. Tough to explain against a team yeah. that just moved up to Division 1A. Mm -hmm. 
interesting formation. This is Ryan Roberts, a defensive end, covering a wide receiver. And a big tackle in the backfield as Anthony Weaver came rushing through. Must have been unblocked. He was there the minute Kirkley got the handoff. Brian Anderson was pulling, and I think uh, Weaver came right through. Yeah, there's Weaver. So this is Ryan Roberts, a defensive end guarding receiver. That's twice in a row. Last time he guarded in a stand-up position a, uh, a Weaver right there, but guarded a wide receiver wide. So now second and 15. Priestley in a spread formation from the shotgun. He's got four wide receivers, three to the top of the field. Blitz by the Irish. Pitt picks it up. And Priestley's going to scramble to the sideline and steps out of bounds at about the 37 run out there by Glenn Earl. David Priestley is an accurate thrower. 64% completion percentage coming in. And Walt Harris's offense, that's what they look for. It should be. It's, you know, that West Coast offense kind of thing, even though they're in Pittsburgh. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the geography always concerns me about these things. But, you know, high completions, run after the catch. Uh, he had a, what, an 85-yard run in their opening game as well. There's the backup, Rod Rutherford, who also sees a lot of action and will play today. Priestley is 11th all-time in passing yards at Pitt with over 2,600. Was a starter in 99 and had a terrific season and then some shoulder surgery and really still looking to regain that form from 99. Here he's going to scramble to find a lane and complete the pass to Wilson. Chris Wilson, the big tight end, upended at the 44-yard line of the Irish by Jason Beckstrom, but it went for 19 yards and a Pittsburgh first down. What a terrific catch by Chris Wilson. He is their tight end, 240 uh, pounds. And, you know, great block over here by Petiti, by the way. And then Priestley steps up. Great adjustment. You see wide receivers make those kind of adjustments. Rarely do you see tight ends do it. Th this guy is a quarterback's dream. A, a tight end that can catch the ball like that, run after the catch. You know, Notre Dame tight ends only caught one ball all year. One between them. I thought that Priestley did a good job, too, to find a passing yep. lane. Yep. Final minute of the first quarter with the Irish up 7-0. First down for Pitt. Flags are down as Kirkley got about six yards, but uh, flags on the play. Jerome Sapp tackled him. Bob Davey, was he feeling the pressure? Well, as Jim noted in his opening interview, he was upbeat when we spoke with him yesterday and saying it's time to seek some identity, to let it fly and not worry about the consequences. You know, all summer they knew they had to get a lot more of the passing game from, you know, from last season. They couldn't win like they did last year consistently, and they had this great attack. And then again, Nebraska, they lost their confidence. Offsides on the defense, five-yard penalty, repeat first down. They lost their confidence, kind of went into a shell in the second and third game, and as you said, he said, hey, we just got to let it hang out and let it, let it rip. I think he's lined up right offsides there. Yep. A mental error by the Irish. Well, they be acknowledging that uh, the Irish had not played to their potential. And shoulder lined the ball. Six defensive backs here, Pat, on first and five. And Petiti in the shotgun. Sends Slade in motion. High snap. Priestley standing in the pocket. Now scrambles free. Makes a nice little move and looks like he has a first down just short of the 30, covered by Courtney Watson. Boy, the Irish did a good job that time of taking away Antonio Bryant. Walt Harris trying to get the ball deep to Antonio Bryant on the play. Double covered. Priestley does it, the good thing, doesn't force it. So Pittsburgh putting together a drive here as the first quarter comes to a close, trying to answer the Irish, who had a 10-play 52-yard march to take the lead. Bryant down here. We haven't really seen him join the wall too much yet today. Three seconds left in the quarter, and they may not get to play away, and they will not. Yeah. Into the first quarter at Notre Dame. With a touchdown, Antonio Bryant's first catch of the game, a 32-yard pass from David Priest. 
sleeve for the score. He beat Jason Beckstrom on the play. The terrific call. J.D. Brookhart, the offensive coordinator. Walt Harris, the head coach, calls the plays. I mean, a corner out perfectly thrown. Here he is. You know, and he gives the receiver, or the quarterback, plenty of room to throw that corner. I mean, you could really loft it over the defender's shoulder. Great throw by Priestley. Well run route by Bryant. Bryant's first touchdown of the season. He's been banged up, as you know, with a left ankle sprain. And he scored 11 receiving touchdowns a year ago. Nick Lotz for the extra point. Lotz puts it through the uprights, and Pittsburgh has tied Notre Dame at 7-7 on the catch. 32 yards by All-American Antonio Bryant. It capped a seven-play, 80-yard drive in three and a half minutes. And watch how quick here he is. He is off the ball. You know, the defender tries to get his hands on him, sheds that guy, and then watch how much room he leaves for the quarterback to throw the ball on the corner route. Oftentimes, receivers play don't over. leave enough room. On sportsmanlike conduct on Notre Dame, 15-yard penalty would be enforced on the kickoff. Good uh, protection there by Matt Morgan. You saw him number 75, and David Priestley should be happy. Well, you probably heard Dennis Hennigan there in the background. After the play was over, there was a flag on the PAT after the uh, play was over on sportsmanlike conduct on Notre Dame. And you saw Bob Davey there. Speaking to Donald Dykes, I'm not sure if he was the offender or not, but uh, the Irish will be penalized on the kickoff after that 80-yard drive by the Panthers. So Bob Davey had a brief respite from the cat calls and now sees his defense surrender a long drive to tie the score. So the opening play of the second quarter sees Pitt tie it as Priestley with the touchdown pass. He's talking to Walt Harris, his head coach, who is also the quarterback coach. And Walt Harris says when he looks for a prospect, uh, he looks for a football player. Didn't mention strong arm. That was way down the list. He recruited Priestley when he was an assistant at Ohio State. Yeah. Priestley found himself down the depth chart and decided to transfer. For the Panthers. Duff and Jones deep for the Irish. In a tie game, 7-7. Seven and seven. This one deep into the end zone where Jones found it. Had second thoughts and started to come out, but his knee was already down in the end zone. So you know, touchback, to Irish from the 20. Like the last touch, it's tough enough playing this game with 11 guys on defense, but I think the Irish only have 10. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So. You know, you can only, you know, when you're playing against Antonio Bryant, it, uh, <laughs> you need maybe 12. Yeah, you need 12. You have 10 defenders. That's a problem. So now the offense back on the field after scoring on their last possession. A 50-yard drive answered by the Panthers. Good uh, drive. Holiday, still a quarterback. Good drive by Pittsburgh. Wasn't it? 80 yards. Yeah. On the road, man. On first down. Looks like a first down, Mark Ponto, that tough, strong safety for the Panthers, is finally able to get the uh, sophomore quarterback, but not until he has first down yardage. You know, we, we talked at the very beginning of the show, Tom, that, you know, the great thing about college football is you get a chance to redeem yourself every week, come, you know, come back and, you know, atone for last week's sin. Seriously, clearly the Irish, this is the best offensively they played all year long. There's Arnez Battle, who is injured and out. The wide receiver for the Irish, who began last season as the starting quarterback before he was injured. Holiday again on the option. Keeps, cuts up the field, ducks under, and is tackled by Lewis Moore after a short gain on the play. Moore, a sophomore linebacker from Cape May, New Jersey. And as good as Carlo Holiday may be as a runner. During the course of the next eight games for the Irish, they're going to have to come up with some plays in the pass game, in the passing game. 22 yards passing today thus far, although they've looked better. But they have to give the wide receivers, get the ball to the line, give them a chance to run with the ball after the catch. They've rushed for 75. Two tight ends, Owens and Godsey. 
And Holiday will pass the protection. Now he has right the protection and go to the sideline. He can't pass now beyond the line of scrimmage. And as much as he sends it out of bounds at about the 42-yard line, that would be enough for another Irish first down. Once more, a second straight tackle. One, one thing, Tom, Carl Holiday has taken a lot of shots. He has. I mean, you know, they have a lot of options. They have, have a lot of draws. But he's taken a lot of shot, shots on passing calls. Godsey's open right here. Let's see where they spot the football. Looked like it was enough for the first down, and they're still giving it a long look. And one official on the side. It is. First down, yeah. So first down, Irish, from their own 42-yard line. It's a 7-7 game. Holiday has rushed more than he passed, as we expected. Lipinski with a rare carry, and they collapse him immediately. Brandon Williams was first to arrive, and Lipinski only his, well, his first carry of the season. He's caught a couple of passes. You think it would surprise him, don't you? <laughs> he doesn't carry the ball much. You think it would at least surprise him. And Gerald Hayes was not uh, surprised nor amused. Army trying to get their first win. That's been a close game throughout Tennessee and Georgia at Neyland Stadium, and the uh, the Bulldogs playing the ball's tough. A&M trailing Baylor. That's a surprise. Aggies were a big favorite. Lion as expected. The three-man rush could actually go. He's probably, probably got plenty of time to throw. Here comes a blitz, though. Holiday has Hunter. Ducks out of bounds. Short game. <laughs> Side midfield, Shante Spencer escorted him out of bounds. The quarterback sees by formation, if you see just a three-man rush, unless you see this guy or this guy come, you're going to have a lot of time to throw the ball. He sees a quick blitz, so he hits his receiver quickly on the side adjustment. Now, that's okay on second down. On third down, you can't run that route because you punt it. This will be the second, third, and long they face as Holiday hits Hunter. Short of the first down, it's third down and five. And a spread formation for wide receivers from the shotgun. Jones is running back next to Holiday. Holiday in the blitz. Gets his receiver, Gibbons. And Gibbons with a first down to the 40-yard line. Mark Parko tackled him. But they ran the blitz. Holiday unloaded in a hurry. And Gibbons has the first down. Three third downs. Pittsburgh has blitzed on all three of those. Here you see Torrey Cox, number five. Uh, Jordan Black picks him up. Good read by uh, Holiday. Receiver sees the side adjustment. Uses the hands to catch the ball. If he waits for that ball to come to the body, it's an incomplete pass. So well done by David Gibbons. Welcome back, Gibbons, who's been banged up much of the season. First down from the Pittsburgh 41. Option play. Holiday. Again, it keeps and takes another shot. This one around the ankles from Mr. Tough Guy Ramon Walker, the free safety of Pitt. A really nice block by Kurt Vollers. Went to waste because Walker just killed his quarterback. But Kurt Vollers, the right tackle, does his job. This is about the sixth option play they've run. He's only pitched it once. Again, he's one of the remote walkers, one of those guys. Boy, when he hits you, you go right down. He has uh, had 16 games where he's had double-figure tackles for the Panthers. And he's probably had seven now. Ranked 16 all-time. He has five officially thus far. I give two others. <laughs> Notre Dame has outgained the Panthers, but the game is a 7-7 affair here in the second quarter. Holiday fumbled it, picked it up, but he stopped for a loss. Back to the 40-yard line by Ryan Smith. Ryan Smith, number 58, one of what, four defensive ends that play. Again, pretty small defensive ends. Nice basketball play there by Holiday. Lucky it came right yeah. back to him. That ball doesn't always bounce yeah. through, does it? Yeah. Real quick defensive end. Smith is 255 pounds. Brian Knight's 240. They're kind of strong safety types. They put down the three-point stands and really try to get them upfield. Three-yard loss, so it's third down and seven. Blitz, Holiday sacked back at the 49-yard line by Gerald Hayes, the middle linebacker who came on the blitz. His third sack of the season. The one thing, too, I think that Bob Davies got to talk to Carl Holiday about is protecting the football. I mean, uh, again, well-timed. You know, it, it's one thing, oh boy, it, it, the defensive lineman set that thing up. You, you see a linebacker coming through that cleanly, it means the scheme was good, and the defensive lineman occupied enough offensive linemen to allow the middle linebacker to come right through. Hillbold kicks to Bryant. 
Another high kick by a fair catch called and made at the 15-yard line. But covered 36 yards, and Pitt will take over in a 7-7 game. Tom Hammond, Pat Hayden, Jim Gray, Notre Dame Stadium, 7-7 game. And even though David Priestley directed an 80-yard scoring drive the last possession, Pittsburgh changes quarterbacks. They go with the sophomore from Pittsburgh, Rod Rutherford. Like Carlisle Holiday, no more for his running than his passing. Walt Harris sending in Rutherford to direct this Panther attack, which begins from the 15. Notre Dame showing blitz on first and 15. But they don't come, and the give is to Kirkley. And Kirkley stopped for a loss in the play. You know, Tom, I, I know the idea of, of getting uh, Rod Rutherford the chance to play, but I mean, David Priestley just led a long drive. It's a game of momentum. The guy is hot, and I, I, I wouldn't put him in at this point. I'd give Rutherford my chances. They maybe not this point of the game. Well, Harris, didn't he tell us that he's got to show confidence to right. the young man, show yeah. that he'll put him in in any situation? And well, this is a vote of confidence, if nothing else, because your other quarterback just tied the game for you. Rocky Borman with that last tackle for Notre Dame as Rutherford lines up in the shotgun for the first time. And he'll keep it. He has a big running lane, makes a nice move, and is spun down right around the first down marker by Abram Elam. And there's that running ability you spoke of for Rob Rutherford, who comes in as the second leading rusher for the Panthers. And what's the block by uh, Kirkland, number 43? He's the, uh, the running back. Big lane there for Rutherford. This is a run the entire way, quarterback draw, spread him out with the four wide receivers. Put a nice move on Jerome Sapp to get a few extra yards, enough for the first down. You know, he's a strong runner. That's the 24th carry of the year. He has not given up a lost yard in any of his rushes. Not been sacked. And here he's changing the play, apparently. He's got two wide receivers to the bottom of your screen with Bryant in the slot. And the give is to Kirkley. He found some room right up the middle. Crosses the 30 to the 32-yard line before Anthony Weaver makes the tackle. Uh, I tell you, I like this Raymond Perkins. I mean, if the play before, he throws to key block for his quarterback, then they feed him the ball. He picks up about six yards. We haven't seen him catch it yet, but he's a good receiver out of the backfield. I mean, for a guy who's 18 years old, he is a uh, pretty mature player. Came uh, to Pittsburgh from prep school at Fort, U Fort Union uh, Military Academy. After uh, prepping at Madison County High School in Virginia before that. Looks like one of the wide receivers raising their hands. It was Bryant, didn't know the play. Didn't matter, he wasn't involved as Kersley gets the call. Shane Walton from a corner spot down at the bottom of that stack. It's going to bring up a third down and short for Walt Harris and his Pittsburgh Panthers. They sort of reinvented themselves. They changed their logo. They changed their colors, tweaked them a little bit, a little darker blue. The Panther is different, moved into Heinz Field. Pitt Stadium is no more, and not, not known as Pitt anymore. They want to be the University of Pittsburgh, so trying to reinvent themselves. And Walt Harris uh, certainly has the confidence of everyone, the Big East Coach of the Year back in 97, now in his fifth season. Wow. Blitz <laughs> by the Irish against the option, and the pitch to Kirkley, and Kirkley carrying Irish defenders, tucks it for a first down to the 41-yard line. Well, uh, Abram Elam, number 16, I mean, he is coming right here. And, and then he hits a wall. Watch it. He's going full speed. Boom. Shut out. You know, good offensive line play. You, 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 you protect, you know, the, the quarterback very quickly, so he has a chance to run the option, and the quarterback pitches the ball at the tailback for the first down. So good play by Pittsburgh. Panther first down at the 41. Rutherford. High formation, option. Lost the ball, and Notre Dame recovers. Anthony Weaver, after Rutherford just dropped it, I think trying to make the pitch or deciding whether or not to make yeah. the pitch. I think, you know, Weaver may have actually knocked it out of his hands. So? No, well, I don't know. It, it was a possibility. A couple things happened there. Nonetheless, it was a good play by Anthony Weaver. Here he is. He had one sack earlier in the game. No, it was just dropped. Yeah, he tried to yeah. pitch it and it sort of stuck to his hand. Now they say an incomplete pass. That, that is that is not an incomplete pass. No fumble. I, I, 
You heard Bob Davey vehemently saying he was running the option. Yeah, I, I have to agree with uh, Bob Davey on that point. That, that was a fumble. And 80,795 fans, mostly partisan Notre Dame fans, don't agree either. I'm not sure what the officials see here to call this a pass. I mean, he tried to pitch it. It went right into Anthony Weaver. I mean, and Kirkley, it was a backwards pass. Kirkley was behind him, was he not? Well, uh, is that what it's he, a pitch. I mean, it, it certainly seems like a. Uh, if he were, if Kirkley were ahead of him, it would be a forward pass, right. and an incomplete pass. Don't know what they saw there, but that's a fumble. Second and ten, as the Panthers retain possession. Rutherford, the lefty delivers the pass to Bryant. Complete Bryant with a couple of moves. He lost the ball. It's still loose, and now Notre Dame has it. Courtney Watson back in coverage, trailing the play, hops on the football after Bryant fumbled. He would have had a Pittsburgh first down. Ball comes loose, and once again, the Irish take advantage of a turnover. This time, it'll stay in the books. Here's the pass from Rutherford. Bryant with a nice catch. But the ball flies free, and the Irish have their second turnover of the game. and cuts up. That's been the dominant play on the option. He hasn't pitched as much as he has kept. That time, Brandon Williams on the stop for Pitt. Brandon Williams and... You know, the Irish this week were really, you know, they talked to us about practicing, you know, causing turnovers. One thing is getting a bunch of guys around the ball. Right. You see four or five blue jerseys around the receiver, Antonio O'Brien. I think it was Shane Walton who kind of stripped him of the ball, and then Vontez Duff making recovery. But one of the things that... Greg Bannison, the defensive coordinator, says, hey, we have to hustle more. We have more jerseys around the ball carrier. Second and six play. Fisher. Two or three yards. Dan Stevens in the middle of the defensive front for Pittsburgh gets the tackle. We'll go in-depth on the Fighting Irish by logging on to NBCSports.com. Click on a special section, NBC's Notre Dame Central, which features expert analysis by Pat. Mm -hmm. Player profiles, video highlights, pre- and post-game audio interviews with Coach Bob Davey and key players all at NBCSports.com. You know, I'm disappointed you don't visit my site more often. How do you know I haven't? But you never talk to me about it. You never, you know, you never challenge me. Antonio Bryant, the All-American receiver, has a touchdown catch and a fumble. But the Irish are trying to take it in. So third and four, and the pass complete to Hutter. He has a first down. Well, that's a good play by Carl Holiday because he actually took a shot, you know, a blitz from the backside. From Mark Ponko. Yeah. When I say his backside, it's because he's looking to his left. And Ponko is just going to, boom, get in the backside. Again, the receiver, uh, uh, Javen Hunter, does the right thing in, in running the route the distance to, to make the first down. We've seen in the past they've run him short. But he had the distance for the first, you move the chains. All the things they weren't doing offensively the first few games are doing better. Well, they might be like the better in this game. Holiday got the start at Texas A&M last week, and he was knocked out of the game, and he's taking some shots here today, but uh, still in there as Brian Knight stops Fisher for a loss of one. Brian Knight, who grew up in the Buffalo area, and his uh, parents take in foster children. And he thought uh, some maybe 80 or so had passed through there. Uh, of, of all uh, ages, races, and particular problems. And uh, it was a great upbringing for Brian Knight and uh, very close to his parents, especially his mom. And he was a delight to talk to, wasn't he? Wants to be a teacher. She graduate to school for education there. Some 85 have uh, passed through as foster children. Gibbons makes a catch and scrambles with Shantae Spencer holding on. Gets about a five-yard gain. His second catch of the game. Syracuse with a win over Rutgers today. Syracuse will visit Pitt next week. Well, another one of those third down situations where you know, Bob Davies spent more time on offense this week, said we need to develop a personality, particularly on these third down situations, spread it out, let Carlisle Holiday either run or throw it. Now Holiday moves under center. Set up a screen, it looked like Fisher is the 
receiver, and he got nothing. It wasn't much of a screen. They just had Fisher in the flat, and Nick Cole smelled it out for the Panthers. Cole, a nickel back on in that situation, makes the play. Yeah, he, he sure does right here. Reads it absolutely perfectly. I mean, good catch by Fisher, but Coles is just, he was expecting the screen, forces a punt. So Antonio Bryant, his fumble didn't hurt the Panthers, and Hillbold will be on to punt on fourth and seven. There's Bryant, touchdown catch. Pretty good punt return, too. Always looks at these guys, see if he's going to have a chance to return it. They, they get blocked, and he thinks he can return it. Hillbold's punt. Bryant uh, let it bounce. Dangerous. He was right in front of it. Lucky it didn't bounce into him. And it'll be down at the five-yard line. A 41-yard punt. And Pittsburgh will be backed up deep. Bryant, let it go. They'll be at the five. Priestley's pass knocked away. And flags are down, intended for Antonio Bryant, but covered by Jason Beckstrom. And they're going to call Beckstrom for interference, apparently. Either that or a hold. I mean, Could be either, yeah. He may have, grabbed his, uh, may have grabbed his jersey. Yeah, Antonio Bryant is really strong. I mean, what I've been, 6'2", 195 pounds, gets off quickly and gets away from the defenders. Pass interference on the defense. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. Let's look at it. Next from is number nine. Sets him up outside. Uh, yeah, he was grabbed. Yeah, he was grabbed. Yep. Absolutely good call. And Priestley happy with the Panther first down as they get a little room back to the 15. 149 left in the second quarter. Priestley changes the play. Still plenty of time in the play clock. Quickly stopped in his tracks. A nice form tackle by Dykes from the safety spot. Don't forget near the conclusion of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team, and Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Well, Dykes, you mentioned making that stop. He's actually ordinary the free safety. We're playing six defensive back. He's really playing like a linebacker now. He and Shane Walton both up close to the line of scrimmage. With Dykes, ordinary the free safety. You've mentioned it a couple of times that we quizzed Bob Davey on playing these pit receivers man-to-man, -man, including Bryant, as Priestley calls a timeout and said, we're going to stay man-to-man. -man. We are. He's this out and going to halftime 7-7. Seven, seven. Well, we're going to hand off to Kirk the tailback to the 30-yard line. Wisney the tackle. And by the time they mark the ball ready for play, I don't believe they'll have to run another play before halftime. Unless they choose to. It looked like they were, as you said, content to let it tick away. Well, you know, they've had a couple of... Pittsburgh has played pretty well defensively. Bryant's had a couple of big catches, one for the touchdown, but they haven't had enough continuity or rhythm in that passing game. And for Notre Dame, I think Bob Davey has to be pleased with the way his offense has played. And it's a close ball game. Notre Dame has to keep these games close because they're not a dynamic offensive team. They're not going to, you know, blow people away on offense. So the first half comes to a close with uh, Rutherford. Number five, 65 yards on kickoff returns. He blocked a punt. Plays on every special teams unit. This guy can play. Nick Seta will kick off for Notre Dame to get the second half underway. This one will be short of the goal line and taken by Cox at about his three. Finds a seam, cuts to the sideline and lowers his head and finally taken down hard by the kicker, Nick Seta. Seta's a little more than a kicker, as Notre Dame fans know. Pretty good all-around athlete. The Return covered 17 yards before Seta hit him hard. Well, that wasn't a terribly productive first uh, half. Only three completions between the two, but, you know, one for a touchdown. 
Yeah, they so. continue to play a lot of man for man, and I guess they got, you know, they got a little bit more pressure on the, uh, the quarterbacks than they anticipated. Pittsburgh led the Big East in passing a three of the last yeah. four years and came into this game second in the Big East in passing and only three completions. A little bit of surprise. You, can, you know, Miami's in the, in the Big East, so, uh, you know, Walt Harris does get a lot of productivity out of the passing game. First down play. David Priestley hands to Kirkley, and Raymond Kirkley hit immediately by Ryan Roberts. The Panthers had that 80-yard drive in the first half. Resulted in a touchdown, and the rest of the time they didn't do much. Yeah, the, the two turnovers were the key, really. The interception and the fumble. Notre Dame turned one of those into points. Again, I think, you know, you got to give Antonio Bryant uh, more of a chance. you got to give him some more opportunities. Very good after he catches the ball, you know, in, in the run, in, in running game as well. Going to two ball Now Rutherford in at quarterback, trapped and sacked. Big loss for Rutherford, who really made only a token look at a pass and immediately started to run. And Daryl Campbell tackled him for a loss. Yeah, these guys inside, you see the inside blitz. Daryl Campbell just kind of fights off his guy, and, and, and Daryl Campbell, a junior from there, he is one of those guys that's been waiting to explore. Very smart guy, but he's kind of plays a little bit high. Yeah. Priestley back at quarterback. They're alternating quarterbacks on plays now, and Priestley's in the shotgun. Sends Slade in motion. Plenty of time. Priestley's pass short. Of Antonio Bryant, he had all day, and Bryant had come free of the coverage from Walton and Sapp, but the pass short hopped him, and Pitt will have to punt. Yeah, it looks Bryant's, like Bryant's yeah. hurt. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes as a quarterback, when you have that much time, you feel like you still have to get rid of it. He could have waited another half a second and allowed Antonio Bryant to come open. I mean, you know, big old area here. Priestley just kind of rushed himself a little bit. So Andy Lee is on to punt for Pitt, and Julius Jones awaits the kick. Bryant uh, continues to hang that shoulder on the sideline. This one got up in the air and then sort of went the other way. It takes a good pin bounce, however. And will be down at about the Notre Dame 41 yard line, a 43 yard punt. And Bryant, this could be a big loss for the Panthers. Well, this Wednesday at 9, 8 Central, don't miss the much-anticipated premiere of the highly acclaimed NBC drama, The West Wing. It's back, it's new, it's better than ever. That's The West Wing premiering Wednesday at 9, 8 Central here on NBC. You may have read that after the events of September 11th, the premiere was delayed a week and redone. And everyone wants to see what they come up with on NBC this week. Julius Jones gets the call and doesn't get much. Well, Pirafoy with the stop. Notre Dame has had 14 first uh, down plays. We look at the possessions, a lot of punts. Punting's leading, the punter's leading the uh, team in time played, which is a bad, bad stat. But they've had 14 first down plays thus far in the game. All 14 of them hit runs. Now, they have called some passes on those with the quarterback right. scramble. But I think they need a much better mix. I think they need to throw the ball, you know, 35, 40% on first down. Jones, right blockers bounces to the outside and it's collapsed with a pit defense mark ponko from that strong safety spot the man that uh, paul rhodes the defensive coordinator thinks is uh, one of the toughest guys on his defense he's the toughest guy i've ever coached toughest guy best player i've ever been around and you look at him he's not you know he's not big he's only 5 10 200 he's not fast can't jump high but boy, can he play, and he wins this hard hat award. They have this kind of award the defensive coordinator, Paul Rhodes, gives to his guys each week. And it's kind of an all-week thing for effort and preparation and then getting it done on Saturdays. I was touched when you guys awarded me the hard hat award. <laughs> Gibbons stretches out and has the first down. Sean Robinson great over it. He retired it. Um, <laughs> But, he, you know, there, there was a good play where it uh, allowed the the, uh, the receiver to run a little bit after the catch, you know. And that was David Givens. First, you got to get the release. He does versus Robinson, number seven. Then the receiver gives him a chance. You know, didn't have to adjust, didn't have to wait for the ball. And that's why they pick up the first down. That's the kind of, they need some more of those plays. You need to get, get some 20 and 30 yard pass plays. Here's the option, Holiday. And is 
stopped at about the 43-yard line. So if I'm Matt, Paco again. Excuse me. If I'm Matt Lavecchio, the backup quarterback from Notre Dame, I, I have my helmet near and dear because I, I tell you, Carlo Holiday has taken a bunch of shots. Here's Matt Lavecchio, number 10, who played so well for the Irish a year ago. Handled uh, the demotion with maturity, Coach said. Coach Bob, Dave, Bob Davey told us. And uh, started the first two games of the season this time for the Irish before giving away to Holiday last week and again this week. Julius Jones dancing his way for a couple of yards. Ryan Smith. They, if the Irish are going to get more of the running game, they've they got to get some holes. There is just not a lot of holes there. I mean, there was nowhere for Julius Jones to run. Saw so that uh, Godsey had a couple of touchdown passes for Georgia Tech today. His brother Gary Godsey is a Notre Dame tight end. Formerly a quarterback. Third down and three from the Pittsburgh 41. A lot of guys close this last turn. Here's the option. Pitch to Jones. Got a block. Lebiski gave him a block and he dives ahead close to the first down. Let's see where they spot it. Raymond Weaver up from that safety spot for a piece of the tackle. And they'll take a long look at it here. They're going to call the chains in. You, you mentioned the block by Lipinski. You know, you have to be an unselfish guy to play fullback in Notre Dame. It used to be a position where they gave, gave him a lot of carries. Only one this year earlier in this game. He's got a couple of catches. But you're, you're, uh, you've got to make blocks like he did just there. It was Walker again that kind of finished him off. Just made it. I think Notre Dame fans are waiting for Julius Jones to break one. Yeah, to play. yeah, they have the one. You know, he put on about what, 15 pounds. He doesn't look as quick to me as he did a year ago. Mark Sapinski, the fullback, number 36. And that's on Ponko, the strong safety. Without that, you know, you punt the football. Yep. Yes, it is. Jones is able to get barely the first down. So the Irish continue their drive. Their first possession of the second half, it's at the 38-yard line now, and they come with a two-tight end formation, Owens and Godsey, high in the backfield, Lipinski and Jones. Julius Jones, by the cut back, strong tackle made by Pirafoy. And Antonio Bryant, we saw him uh, injured on the last possession for the Panthers. Jim Gray with an update. Well, Tom, Antonio Bryant has a grade one separated right shoulder. He did it on that play at the end of the first half where he fumbled the ball, and then on that last play when he went down on it, uh, it's very painful. Uh, he says he's going to return. The training staff has okayed him to return, uh, and he's going to try it, but he's having difficulty reaching his arm above his shoulder. Tom? All right, Jim, so the injury riddle season continues for Bryant. Holiday on the uh, keep, and Stevens kept him to about a yard gain. And if you're Tony O'Brien, you tell your, your quarterback, please don't throw many high floaters. Is, uh, is Holiday reading the option correctly? Seems like he is kept on the majority of those option plays. You know, I've been watching Notre Dame run the option play here for about three years. They pitch it very, very rarely. Now, they did pitch it once on the touchdown, but rarely. I mean, they're very, very conservative with their pitches. 95% of the time, they're going to keep that ball. Four wides in this formation for the Irish on third down and six. Spreading the field. And here comes a blitz from Ben. It's the action again. And there is the pitch to Fisher. Tony Fisher caught by the shoot top by Brian Guzman. How about Guzman? 255 pounds. I mean, he didn't look terribly quick. He's out here trying to run to catch a bus. <laughs> there. But Guzik just kind of keeps on plugging, keeps on plugging. Takes a good angle. You know, he's not going to outrun him, but he took the proper angle to stop him short of the first down. Big play. Yeah, he's won one of those hard hat awards, hasn't he? Yes, he has. Yeah. Get to wear that around all week, and they bring it out to practice. They bring it on the road when you win that hard hat. And on fourth and six, the Irish are going to go for it. Now, I have somebody spying Holiday for a, a, a quick Panther on defense. Two tight ends, eye formation. Gibbons the only receiver wide. Holiday's pass is to Gibbons. He's got it for the first down. Good throw by Holiday. I mean, he was patient in the pockets. I mean, if he can continue to, to be patient, he'll grow as a receiver. Started by pretty good protection. Play action fake knows exactly where he wants to go to the boat with the ball in between three defenders. Boy, Bob Davey going for it on fourth and six. Celebrates a conversion, and Gibbons found the right spot to sit down and give Holiday a target. 
So the Irish continue after converting a fourth down play. They've got the ball at the pit 26 in a 7-7 game. It's Tony Fisher. Oh, tough running to the 20, Corey Humphreys in the secondary. All right, a safety spot for Pittsburgh makes the tackle, and no question, Fisher is uh, the toughest runner the Irish have. Uh, the coaches have uh, described him as a warrior. Whenever he throws the, the key ball and the touchdown, a very unselfish guy here in his senior year. Never complained about not getting uh, getting the ball much. Uh, just kind of, he's a tall, lean, angel <laughs> guy, just kind of squeezing his way through. Lipinski and Fane blocking, and he found a way to squeeze through there. Oh, Parker! Oh. And yeah, Holiday finally falls on it. A missed handoff, mishandled handoff, and Holiday falls on it to retain possession for the Irish, but a loss on the play. Then, you know, he was pitching it. That, that was uh -huh. a miscommunication. He was pitching it, and Tony Fisher was expecting to hand it off. And he just kind of threw it at him. Three-yard loss, and now it's third down and eight. The Panthers have been blitzing on these third and longs. Once again, Gibbons, the only wide out, and he's in motion. Holiday, play action fake, got away from one man. Now sees a running lane, and then ducks back and passes a lane duck out of bounds and incomplete. Pirafoy was... Bearing down on Carlisle Holiday. It looked like he was going to run for a moment and then tried a pass and just sailed it out of bounds to uh, save the field goal. Yeah, try. yeah it, was a smart, it was a smart play. You know, real quick early pressure by uh, Pirafoy, the, the uh, linebacker, and one of the, the outside linebackers who blitzed. But again, the presence of mind, get it out of bounds, give your field goal kicker a chance. Nick Setta will attempt a 41 yard field goal. He's three of three this season, attempting a 41 yard, which would equal, or you know, which would not be as long as 47 yards. It's up, and it is good to give Notre Dame the lead. Nick set up on 41 yards, and the Irish go back on top. They lead it 10-7. It used to be. Set a kick will be taken by Cox at the three. Fumbled it, picked it up. Dodging tacklers. And it stopped at the 15-yard line. Ball came loose, the Irish say, but the official is pointing that the ball is down and Pittsburgh retains possession. Vontez Duff, the tackle on special teams. You know, sometimes when you drop it, you know, it kind of disrupts the, the coverage and you have to see a big return, but... There's too many blue jerseys around Cox this time. The ball, I think, came loose, but they called it down. Cox uh, never, yeah, never, see. never. You know, it's like he came up too far because he had to catch it at about his shoulder height. Yeah. <laughs> Antonio Bryant looks to be in. I think that is Antonio Bryant right there. The bad shoulder. And there he is. Quarterback is Priestley. And this is uh, zone coverage here by Notre Dame. And he switches his running backs and then gets back to the shotgun. And it's, it's a no huddle, but not a hurry up. And had plenty of time. Priestley's pass over the middle, complete. Looks like a 10 yard gain to Bryant. Bad shoulder and all. And Courtney Watson hit him right away. You know, I, I've had a, a number of those shoulder separations. I, well, he's going back out. But I, it, it's so hard to get your arms above your body. That's what Jim Gray was saying a little bit earlier. It's still over the middle. It's exactly what he did. Catches the ball, picks up the first down, but his shoulder, he came out of the game. So Bryant mm. takes himself out and tries to shake off. He's replaced by Lamar Slade. Tries to shake off that shoulder injury. He has a touchdown reception on his three grabs today, which equals his production the entire season coming in, hampered by injuries from the first game. Kirkley tripped up at the line of scrimmage, fell forward for a couple of yards. Well, the Pittsburgh runs uh, no huddle. They don't rush it like you were just saying a moment ago, Tom. You know, they, they, everybody looks over to the sideline. All the skilled position players. It's not just the quarterback. If you look at the receivers, they're all looking over. You know, oftentimes it's just the quarterback, but the receivers see the play called, and then Priestley just talks to his offensive lineman about the snap count. Second down play. It's a pass. Priestley 
Finds the outlet receiver and completes it to Joe Valia. The senior fullback from Apollo, Pennsylvania. Stopped by Tario Harrison. But Valia getting some playing time to walk on. Yeah, and Valia there right here. Again, just to check down, usually the third receiver. Fullback, uh, if you have a fullback who can catch, and all these Pittsburgh fullbacks can catch, polite and Valia. I mean, you have a weapon there for your quarterback when he can't find the receiver down, so you can dump it off to him, and he can still pick up first downs. Valia's first reception of the season. Four wides, and Antonio Bryant's back in the game. Priestley is in the shotgun. Trips to the bottom of the screen. Priestley steps up. Pass complete to Bryant. Bryant dodges one man. Is taken down at the 49 of Notre Dame. So David Priestley knows, you know, when to hold the ball, when to get rid of it. He sees the blitz. That time he really realized he had plenty of time. So he's got a pretty good feel. Good pass protection. Steps up, lets the rush go behind him. Keeps the ball number high for Bryant, so it's not nearly as tough on his shoulder. And a 14-yard gain. Bryant now four catches, 75 yards, and a touchdown. First down at the Irish, 49. Notre Dame up 10-7. Four minutes left, third quarter. Hand off to Kirkley. Spins for three or four yards. And Greg Madison on the defensive, he's the defensive coordinator for Notre Dame. When you're playing against this no huddle, you worry about substitutions, but they're all looking at him. Down line, defensive linemen, linebackers, and defensive backs. Tario Hart Harrison is the number 51 there, is the defensive captain. And he doesn't handle his team either. Trips to the right side, top of your screen this time for Pitt. Priestley from the shotgun. Not much of a rush. Pass complete. Oh, yeah. And carrying tackles with his English. A.J. English, 6'3", 215 pounds. Top receiver for the Panthers. Goes for 19 yards. They just couldn't get him down. You know, R.J. English was just one of those guys who needed a chance in college football. One of those good stories. You know, walk on. Just looking for an opportunity. He got one. Had a good year a year ago. Hurt his knee. Came back. And then when Bryant was hurt early in the year, he became the featured receiver. Really good play by English. RJ was carrying, it uh, looked like a bull wrestling. <laughs> they couldn't get him down. <laughs> Priestley got away from a tackle. Complete right in the center of the game. Oh, again, in front of it. He dropped it. And Notre Dame has it. Elam. Look. Yeah, Elam recovered. He just dropped it, Tom. I don't know if you saw it. He was just running. It just kind of came out of his hand. I think he's getting ready to dive to the end zone. R.J. English. You know, the play before, he carries three guys and doesn't fumble it. And this time, there's nobody around him. Again, he's right in here. Ready for him. He sits down. And I think he's getting ready to dive for the end zone. It comes out. Just popped out of his hand. And Elam recovers for Notre Dame. Big break for the Irish. So Notre Dame trying to take advantage of their third turnover of the game. And the second by Elam. Elam had the interception that led to the Notre Dame touchdown earlier. And now they uh, get the fumble that prevents what looked like was going to be a Pittsburgh score. So Bob Davey telling Jim Gray at halftime they needed two more turnovers. There's one, Julius Jones able to get to about a yard on that first down carry. It's second and nine from the two-yard line of the Irish. And here's Tony Fisher. He pulled some. He pulled some. Yeah, he pulled a hamstring. At the 30-yard line, he has stopped. He has a first down, as you saw him break free at the line of scrimmage, and then pulled up lame. Still a 28-yard game, but looked like it was going to be a touchdown. Good lead block by Lipinski, and there he just, he's got a hitch right in his left leg. A cramp, something. Otherwise, he goes another 40 yards. Fisher now hobbling off the field. He broke free right at the line of scrimmage, and there you see him in some distress and just able to... Uh, 
make it to the 30-yard line. 28 yards, though, the longest Notre Dame play of the day and only their second 20-yard gain of the season. He has been playing with a sore hamstring, and that's what he grabs. And Lipinski really kind of really set that up again. We'll put Jim Gray on the uh, injury, and he'll tell us when we find out exactly what it is. Uh, formation first down as the Irish escape the shadow of their own goal Jones. line. Julius Jones replaces Fisher. Couple of tough yards. Stevens the tackle for Pitt. Let's go down to Jim Gray. All right, thank you, Tom. We're coming into the game. Uh, he had had a pulled left hamstring, but right now we're told by the uh, doctors that Tony Fisher pulled his right hamstring. They think that maybe he was favoring the left one, and they're looking at him right now, and uh, his return is questionable, but it's a pulled right hamstring today. Tom. All right, Jim. So it's Jones in a tailback. Blitz by Pittsburgh. Holiday keeps. He's got a blocker. Holiday to the 20, to the 10. Touchdown. have been waiting for somebody to make a big play. Carlisle Holiday just made one. 67 yards for the touchdown as the Irish, thanks to Holiday, go 99 yards for the score. Set of the extra point. And it's good. Big turnaround. Pitt fumbles at the one. And Notre Dame, thanks to Carlisle Holiday's 67-yard jaunt, adds to the lead. Here's Holiday, and it's 17-7 Irish. Nick Sanders, Cox and English to beat men. This will be Cox on the fly, short kick. Cox takes it and. Crosses the 20 and then is met violently by the Notre Dame special teams as the Irish get a big lift from that touchdown run. Yeah, it was a 99-yard touchdown, but it was set up by R.J. English fumbling the ball in the one-yard line. It was not hit, just dropped the ball, and then they had a run by Tony Fisher, and then the next play, here is Carlo Ohio. Now, Ponco, number 14, right there, tries to strip the ball. Instead of going for the tackle, try to cause the fumble, he breaks that tackle, and then 67 yards later, increases the lead to 16 to 7. And his wide receivers, Gibbons and Hunter, both with blocks to give Holiday a chance to score. The by far the longest play for Notre Dame this season and the longest Notre Dame rushing play since Terrence Howard ran 80 against West Virginia last year. Priestley. Rush escapes and completes the ball. Right. How many, how many good years have right. And that's what they practiced yeah. on all week, getting players to the football. And yeah. now with their spirits lifted, they're really all over the Yeah, and you, look, you see big old number 60, Campbell, down the field where a wide receiver is. Now, tomorrow in the, in the tape session, Greg Madison will run that play over and over again and say, hey, see, we had six, seven blue jerseys around there, including defensive linemen. Rod Rutherford replaces Priestley at fifth quarterback as Walt Harris continues to uh, shuttle his quarterback, sometimes shuttling in play after play. Option, Rutherford pitches, Kirkley. Notre Dame defended it well, loss in the play. Anthony Weaver was the first guy there. And then they had a lot of company as they're flying to the ball now. Sapp was in there too. And the third quarter was played like a champion by the Irish. They lead Pitt 17-7. Back to Notre Dame after this from your local NBC station. Don't forget tomorrow, 12 noon Eastern, NASCAR Winston Cup Racing returns to NBC. The UAW GM Quality 500 from Charlotte. Then Gravity Games, Bike, Dirt Competition, and Downhill Stand-Up Skateboarding, all starting at 12 noon Eastern tomorrow on NBC. Third and five for the Panthers. 
Priestley's back in at quarterback. The ball at the Pittsburgh 26. As we start the fourth quarter. The pass is complete to Chris Wilson, the tight end. Glenn Earl hits him, but Priestley found the quarterback's best friend. Yeah. The You're tight end, Wilson. Yeah, well, Wilson's, you know, part tight end, part wide receiver. He splits out wide, as he did uh, there, an awful lot. And uh, as we saw earlier, he can adjust to the ball in the air. Talented guy. Rutherford back in. Notre Dame with those 10 points in the third quarter, and what a huge turnaround. A pit fumble at the Notre Dame one, and then the Irish score the other way. Rutherford, the quarterback. Fakes the option and will pass. Intercepted. Shane Walton picks it off for Notre Dame. He's got a blocker in front and he's just tripped up. RJ English and Valia was there too. An 18 yard return as Rutherford's pass is picked off. Yeah, fourth turnover on the day for the Irish. And again, poorly thrown ball there by Rutherford. Just under, he's gonna run the post pattern. After the play action fake, if he gets a little bit more juice on it, you know, it's either incomplete or maybe English makes the catch. But you know, the off corner, Shane Walton makes the play. And then Valia, right there, Just makes the play. Uh -huh. But it, again, they came into the game, they only had caused two turnovers all, all year on defense, no interceptions. That's their first, fourth turnover of the day. Tony Fisher, Jim Gray tells us, is done for the day with a right hamstring injury. He wanted to come back in the game. Trainers said no. So it's Julius Jones at tailback, and Tony Fisher is out for the rest of the game. Here's the congratulations for Walton, who made his first interception of the season. Is. Shane Walton is one tenacious football player. I said it before, he was a great soccer player here when he first came here to play soccer. All Big East in soccer. And a two-year starter now at corner. Option. Holiday. Ducking under. Two yards to the 40. Dale McMurray, number 63 for the Panthers on defense, has got some pretty good push when he's been in there. Rotating a lot of guys. Here he is. 295-pound Daryl McMurray. Ryan Gonzalez and Lewis Moore also in on the tackle for the Panthers. Yeah, but McMurray pushes his guys back. He's got those offensive big guards and tackles over him, and he is awfully strong. Gets great leverage, gets those hands in those guys' chests, and then tremendous strength. Four wide receivers here, Hunter, Gibbons, Jenkins, and Crawford. They're down seven. Apollo fakes the punch once and rolls out. Now he delivers the ball way off target. Gibbons actually had broken to the inside and had left Cox, the defender, in his wake. And Holiday couldn't see. Him. Yeah, he there. He couldn't get turned. Yeah. You know, I, I think Tom. Some of it is is the maturation of a quarterback. You know, you know you're at home. You're leading 17 to seven. That's not the time to take a chance. And uh, you know, maybe the receiver's open. It's probably the right time for him to throw it away. So fourth down. And the Irish punt formation. Hillbury below his average, which led the nation coming in over 48. Beams this one, but the bad news is it reaches the end zone on the fly for the touchback. 40-yard punt, but net 20. It's ball when we return, trailing by 10. Let's go, But he's been very solid, hasn't he? Kicking game has yeah. been... Uh, Yep. One of the few bright spots the first three games for the Irish, and today sort of breaking out in other categories as well. Here's Senna's kickoff. Cox and Spencer, this will be Cox set to three. And a nice cutback and burrows his way down to the 24-yard line. So Bob Davey with ties to the city of Pittsburgh and the University of Pittsburgh. 1977, a graduate assistant on this staff, which was headed by young Jackie Sherrill. 
talking about Jimmy Johnson. Remember him? Coach Fazio later became head coach at Pittsburgh. Dave Wanstead followed Jimmy Johnson to Oklahoma State, then on to Miami. Tony Wise, great offensive line coach. And the graduate assistant, Bob Davey. His job was to get guys to class. <laughs> Did a good job of that. <laughs> yeah, when I read that Tony Dorsett yeah. said something that he's not sure he always succeeded was that <laughs> yeah. in getting people to class. Right. <laughs> it was a defending national championship team. 76 national yeah. champions. Raymond Kirkley, the intended receiver of that priestly pass, which goes incomplete. That was an unbelievable 1976 team. Dorsett is the running back and you Green, Ricky Jackson outside. Uh, they had speed, they had played great special teams. Just under five minutes left. 24-7 Notre Dame. There's Desmond Robinson, the running back, the running back coach for the Irish, who was on the Pitt National Championship team. Priestley dumps it off as he is about to be sacked. Lamar Slade is the closest would-be receiver to the ball. Anthony Weaver. There's uh, Desmond Robinson right there. Right next to Joker Phillips, another Notre Dame assistant. There's Desmond's ring. He had it on yesterday. We talked to him. Yeah. Wears it all the time very proudly. Said, yeah, I played linebacker on that team. I wish I could say I started in between Ricky Jackson and Hugh Green, but I didn't. Third down and 10 for Pitt. And Priestley is sacked by Hilliard, Cedric Hilliard, junior from Arlington, Texas, with his first sack. You know, Bob Davey really has to be happy with the emergence of a couple of players. Daryl Campbell inside, Cedric Hilliard. That time here, his nice little spin move. Great spin to get away from the blocker, Brian Anderson. But the inside guys are finally making some plays. So Andy Lee set to punt, standing in his own end zone. And Julius Jones awaits it at the Irish 40. Lee boots it, and Jones takes it up to 39, dancing, looking for a block. Dragged down at about the 48-yard line by R.J. English. Sunday night, beginning at 9, 8 central, two of NBC's newest dramas are back-to-back -back in an action. Created some big plays, and certainly the defense has taken on a characteristic of causing turnovers. And the try has been from Notre Dame fans, somebody make a play, yep. make a big play, and today they had several. Bunch of, uh, not only big plays, a bunch of guys making, making right. some big plays. Mark Ponko stops Julius Jones. I mean, guys as unlikely as Abram Elam made right, a couple of right, big right. plays. So that's what they've done. Uh, the first three games, two touchdowns and 40 possessions. Today in 10, they record three touchdowns. And a field goal, of course, to lead it. 24-7. Jones, hesitation move, and crosses the 45 to the 43. Pirafoy, another Pittsburgh tackle. There's big Jordan Black, number 78. Said he wanted to join the FBI. He said also was worried about, remember, that lucky hat he'd been wearing around, and for a while thought about maybe, hey, there it is. He said that was his lucky hat. Then he went, oh, they went 0-3. He was talking about abandoning the hat and going to something else, but now he can wear it another week at least. Gave it one more chance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, senior from Texas, as you saw, and uh, actually is eligible for another season. Didn't play as a freshman and told us he will come back next season for his fifth year if he is granted that other year of eligibility. And uh, will get his degree this summer and then come back as a graduate student next season. You know, the Tom, the Irish have a long way to go. They're certainly not a great football team, but if you look at their schedule, perhaps other than Tennessee, and, and Tennessee lost today, perhaps other than Tennessee, they're certainly as good as, talent-wise, everybody else in their schedule. They got two more home games in a row for West Virginia next week, and then uh, USC, both those teams struggling. There's a 
West Virginia. Played Virginia Tech today, and after next week, Notre Dame game, they have to play Miami. So a tough stretch for the Mountaineers. Julius Jones with another carry. There's the remaining schedule for the Irish. Those two home games, West Virginia and Southern Cal, then they travel to Boston College, host the Volunteers and Navy, then close out with two on the road, including that December 1st game at right. Purdue, which looms large, the game that was postponed from earlier. There's the Panthers' remaining schedule. Syracuse at Heinz Field, then BC and Temple on the road. Virginia Tech once again developing point yeah. into a powerhouse down in Blacksburg despite the loss of Michael Vick. And Suggs, the running back, to an injury. Mark Punko with another tackle of Julius Jones. And that's a bad sign when they take off the headset. You know, with 123 left in the game. gone all the way at quarterback for the Irish. And has led Notre Dame to 247 rushing yards today. And let's take a look at our Siebel Systems game summary. Five turnovers by the Panthers, and Notre Dame did not turn it over and were able to rush for nearly 250 yards while holding Pitt to only 50. And rushing yards, 247. And the Irish were averaging, what, under 100 yards rushing? And what about 24 points when they were yeah. averaging 7.7, yeah. the lowest in 1A college football? You know, a large assist to the defense. Yeah. They played a lot of, what, 40, 50 yard fields today. Holiday has done a good job, but he has paid the price for it yeah, because he's been hit many times. Corey Humphrey is the one to hit him there. So the Irish pick up a first down with only 10 seconds left in the game, and they're about to record their first victory of the season. And Bob Davey was worried about the crowd booing him and his team today. Nothing but cheers now. As much relief yeah. as elation. 